In this presentation, we will discuss the concept of composite units and apply break-even analysis with it. The concept of composite units are going to be used when we have more than one type of inventory unit that we are selling. If we think about the standard break-even type of analysis, we usually apply that to one inventory type item. And you might be asking as we do that, what if we have multiple types of inventory that we sell? We don't have just one type of inventory item that we sell. We have multiple, and therefore the break-even analysis would be much more complicated. There is a way to apply the break-even analysis types of calculations with multiple types of inventory. One way to do that is to use the composite unit. In essence, we're going to break this information down as if it was one composite unit apply the break-even analysis in this format to do that we're going to need some information we're going to have to make some assumptions we'll have to have one at least one added assumption that will be applied in our example we're going to say that we have make are making products a b and c so these are the things we sell product a b and c these are the items we sell now we're going to start with a ratio of the products we sell them in a ratio of four three three we'll discuss what that means but this is one of the assumptions we have to have. We've got to say, what's the ratio that we sell these products in? Because that ratio is going to be necessary for us to calculate what the composite units will be. And then we've got our fixed costs. And this, of course, is going to be needed anytime we have the break-even analysis. Just like if we only had one product, we would have the fixed costs in order to perform the break-even analysis. We then have the price and the variable cost broken out by product A, B, and C. The price then, what we sell them for, A, $44, B, $119, C, $269, and then the variable costs per unit for, again, what we sell, A, B, and C, $27, $72, $97, A, B, C, respectively. So now we're going to break out this information over here. I'm going to break out this ratio analysis, the 433. Anytime you see this, you might see this in partnership type problems. And of course, in a problem such as this, where we're going to break this out into a ratio format. What you want to do is always just basically put this in A, B, and C. Write this out for 3 and 3. And then perform the ratio analysis. The ratio analysis is just going to be the summing of these items up to 10. 4, 3, 3, add up to 10. And then take each item for over the total of 10. 4 or 0.4, which is 40%. And if we did that to the 3 divided by 10 we would get 0.3 or 30%. In other words, we get 40, 30, 30. That adds up to 100. That's why it's going to be the ratio. This is a format of us breaking this information out into a ratio. Why don't we just say 40, 30, 30? Well, uh, it's easier to use the ratio analysis here because sometimes it won't be broken out uh, exactly as a percentage. That's the general reason why we have this type of format because we can use it more often. It's more exact if we're not talking exact percentages. Now we're going to calculate the price per composite unit. So what we're going to do is combine, like we're going to make some kind of freakish unit here where these, these may not be at all uh, the same, these types of inventory items, but we're going to combine them together as if they're one inventory item. And we're going to come up with one price, and that's going to be the price per composite unit. So that's our goal now. We want to get the price per composite unit, then with the variable costs per composite unit, that will give us the contribution margin per composite unit on which we can use uh, the break-even type of analysis for it. So price per composite unit. We're going to have our items, our inventory items, A, B, and C. And then we have our ratios, 4, 3, and 3, as we saw in the prior presentation here. And then we're going to have our prices. So here's our prices, uh, 44, 119, and 269. This is how much they cost individually and this is, in essence, our ratio analysis. What we're going to do is just multiply this out. So we're going to take the 44 times the 4, the 3 times the 119. So 4 times 44 is going to give us the 176 and so on. So here's our, and we're basically applying out our ratio in this format. So the 4 times the 44, 176. The 3 times the 119, 357. 3 times the 269, 807. If we add up the 176, the 357, and the 807, we come out to 1,340. This is going to be our price per composite unit. So we've kind of combined them together, and we've gotten our price per composite unit.
The next thing we're going to do is have the variable cost per composite unit. Variable cost per composite unit, similar type of calculation. We're going to have the uh, units again, the inventory items A, B, and C, the ratio 4, 3, 3. And then we have the variable costs given in the problem by inventory item, the 27, the 73, the 72, and the 79 variable costs. Multiplying them out, uh, we would then get, of course, something like 4 times 27. It's going to give us the 108 and so on. So we're going to multiply these out and then adding up the 108, the 216, and the 291, we get a total variable cost per composite unit of the 615. 615. Now we have a variable cost per composite unit and we have the price per composite unit that we have now calculated. We can then perform our break-even analysis with these numbers. We can take the, take the price per composite unit, 1,340, subtract out the variable costs per composite unit of 615. That gives us a contribution margin of 725. So there's kind of our standard type of breakout. We have now have our contribution margin. If we wanted to apply uh, a contribution margin ratio, we could take this number and do the ratio uh, 725 over 1340. And we can get our contribution margin ratio like so. We can also Next thing we're going to do is take this number and figure out what the break-even point is. So now we've got our numbers to, to figure out the break-even point. We have the one number, the contribution margin per composite unit for the break-even point. We can now take our fixed cost just as we would if we only sold one inventory item. Here is our fixed cost. It is what it is, something like the rent. And then we would take the contribution margin per composite unit that we have just figured out, the 725. The 725, if we then divide that out... We're taking the 19575 divided by the 725, and we get the 27. So the 27 is the break-even point in composite units. So, th so this is how many composite units we would have to sell. And re remember, the composite units is kind of like a conglomerate of the ABC units, as if they were basically one unit. We'd have to sell the 27 at the composite sales price that we figured out. But of course, in reality, we're not going to be selling 27 ABC units. We're going to be selling units A, B, and C, not for a composite sales price, but for the prices given here, 44, 119, and 269. So then we can think about the number of units of each product to be sold to, to, to get to that break-even point. In other words, how can we break this 27 uh, composite units out into what actually will be sold in terms of units in terms of a b and c sales units so for that we're going to take our a b c units we're going to take the number of composite units which is the 433 three, basically our ratio the ratios that we use in order to construct the composite unit sales price we're going to take the number of composite units to break even that's going to be the 27 so we're taking this 27 and the 433 three, multiplying that out so the 4 times the 27 is the 108 the 3 times the 27 81 and of course 81 then if we add this up we're going to say the uh, 108 the 81 and the 81 is the 270 so which is you know uh, 27 times 10 or 27 times 10, because that's of course what adds up the 4 3 and the 3 that we use to break out that ratio analysis so we have that same kind of uh comparability between these items if we were to say take the 81 over the 270, we get that 30%. And if we took the 108, if we took the 108 over the 270, we get that 40%. So we have the same kind of ratio analysis breaking this out between A, B, and C. This is the, the unit sales at the break even. So this is going to be the units that we will sell. Let's put this into uh, an adjustment or a contribution margin worksheet, contribution margin income statement to test the break even. So we'll now put this into a contribution margin income statement and we expect the bottom line to be zero because we're testing the break even amount at this point. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the sales, we're going to break the sales out between A, B, and C. We're going to take the units that will be sold, which we figured out to be 108, 81, and 81. The sales price, which were given in the problem, this is what they are sold for, no composite units, the actual sales price, the 44, the 119, and the 269. Multiplying these out, the 108 times the 44 is the 4752, the 81 times the 119, 9639, and the 81 times 269, 21, 
789. If we add these up, the 4725, 4752, the 9639, the 21789 gives us the 36180. Then we're going to take the variable costs for the A, B, and C units that we will be selling. We have our same unit items here, which is the 108, the 81, and the 81. The variable costs given in the, in the problem, these are the actual variable costs. These aren't the composite units, the ones that were originally given in the problem, 27, 72, 97. If we multiply that out then, for example, 108 times 27, we get the 2916. So if we, if we did that all the way down, we're going to get these items for A, B, and C respectively. Adding up the 2916 to 5832 and the 7857, we get the total variable cost 16605. 16605. Then if we take the sales minus the variable costs, that's our contribution margin. Contribution margin 19575. If our break-even analysis is correct, then that should match our fixed costs to have a zero profit so and that's what we've basically shown here so this is one format this composite unit type of format that we can use to do a similar kind of break-even type analysis to do that remember we have to be able to have that ratio of a breakout between uh, the sales items for our units of inventory in this case a b and c and then we can use this composite unit system in order to do a similar type of break-even analysis as we would if we only had one inventory item.